Good morning, my Periscope family. How are you? Hope you're starting your day wonderfully. So I'm going to move, make sure I'm in some good light. This is Savvy Mom Elky. I know, I'm. for those of you that don't know, you probably notice, if you've been on my scopes before, you probably remember me having long braids, but I took them out, giving myself a little break before my next style. <laughs> But I'm Savvy Mom Elky of Savvy Moms Unite. Um, my goal is to help moms manage their lives in a practical, simple, and realistic way. And I do this through um, coaching, through mentoring, advising, as well as um, through my page where I provide resources for uh, working moms and it's particularly single mom as I'm one. I'm a single mom and have been for some time. So emotional spending. This topic has been really um, coming to the forefront of my mind for the last few days because it's something I personally have struggled with in the past. And it's something that, you know, I had to deal with in order to get myself on the right track when it comes to my finances. So emotional spending, what do I mean? Basically, when you're spending money, hello, welcome. Welcome to Just Joined, where the 40s at? <laughs> welcome. Um, again, my name is Savvy Mom Elke of Savvy Moms Unite. Just wanted to provide you some tips on um, emotional spending. So one of the things that I had to do when I first started to discover that I would spend um, <laughs> hello, how are you? That I would spend, overspend, is that I was spending money because I was emotionally attached to money in some way, and I was also doing it to fill a void or to please people. So I love shopping, don't get me wrong, I love buying clothes. I always say I'm a clothes horse, I own tons of articles of clothing. And what I realized was I was spending to buy clothes a lot when I was happy and both when I was feeling really sad. And I was always overspending. I was never hitting a certain target when it came to my budget. I tend to just buy. I was like, oh, I found that on sale. It's a good deal. Come on. It cost, you, it cost me five bucks. What's the difference? And after I had to sit down with a financial coach and track my spending... One time, I kid you not, guys, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm going to be transparent. One time in a three-month span, I spent, I can't even say it, I spent like almost $1,300 in a three-month span on clothes. And this was not like expensive high-end stuff. This was just me finding good deals and going crazy. And of course, I bought clothes for my daughter as well. But after I looked at that, I'm like, within three months... I spent $1,300 on clothing. I could have done better with that. So what my coach had discovered was I needed to kind of scale back and think about why was I spending so much money on clothes in particular? He's like, what are your triggers? Well, one of my triggers is when I felt happy, when I felt proud of myself, I felt like I owed myself this gift of purchasing clothes. So it was a reward factor for me. And then when I was feeling bad and I wanted to like boost my spirits, I'd go purchase something to boost my spirits. And I was realized it was costing me more money than I needed it to because I could do other things to boost my spirit. I didn't necessarily have to spend that money. So I started to discover what was my trigger? What was causing me to walk into that store, not prepared, not using my budget and just totally spending on the wrong things. And you have to address your emotional triggers. You have to address what is causing you to walk in and not really be smart about the way you're spending your money. I'm not saying don't ever buy clothes again, of course, but you want to be you want to make sure that before you walk into that store, you you're strategic. You're saying, "Okay, let's say I have I want to spend 50 bucks when I walk into the store." And that's all I'm going to spend. What I'll do is I'll take $50 in cash because that plastic card, your debit card, your credit card allows you to feel like you have unlimited funds to spend when you really don't. So I just take the $50 in cash. Once that's done, it's done. I'm done. No more. 
that's the kind of way I stop myself from walking into the store kind of haha -ha, lolly dolly trying to you know spend money that I don't have the second thing I do is I don't go shopping when I'm pissed off I just don't do it I'm like I'm mad it's gonna cause it's a trigger for me I'm like I'm not gonna do it today I'm gonna do it when I'm level-headed when I'm when I feel this time for me to really think and be strategic so I don't go shopping when I'm extremely you know down and sad and I don't go when I'm super happy because I know I'm going to try to reward myself. I can reward myself in other ways. What I'll say is, look, if I didn't spend, if I, what I'll do sometimes, I'll say, okay, I stayed within my budget for the last two months. If there's one purchase that I'd like to make, I'll work towards that purchase. Or because that's a way to reward myself. I'm like, okay, I spent the money the way I was supposed to, and I put money away. Once I've made Yes, yes, I would, I would say leave your card at home because it allows you to feel like you have a little more wiggle room. So sometimes I'll do that. I'm like, okay, I'm only taking the cash that I need to shop and I'll leave my card at home and just use whatever you have in your pockets. It's the old school way. It's worked before, but we have now come to a modern society where we can use our phones to scan for money. We can use our cards and it just, it just, especially if you have, um, a bank account that's attached to a, um, overdraft account, you will go over. I, I used to do that religiously. Like I did that all the time. And I cut that off. Do if I suggest you do not have an overdraft account that you don't have connected to a savings. Because, yes, there'll be moments where you're kind of in a bind. But make sure it's a savings account not connected to the bank itself. Because the fees associated with that are insane. So just make sure whatever cash you take, you take it along with you. Also, don't do all your shopping in one day. Separate your food shopping from your clothes and here's why I say this well when you're food shopping you could be better about making a list you can say okay I'm only going to spend this amount on meats on produce on whatever you are discover whatever you shop for and just make sure that you're targeting those things only on your list don't go against your list the reason why the minute you start going against your list you're for one going over budget and two, you're most likely going to spend more than what you realized on the item because you should have done your research before you walked into the store to find out what the sales are. That's always important. Make sure you figure out, okay, what's on sale? What is it that you might have to say no to an item if it's not on sale? It's better that you wait a week or two when it's on sale to purchase it and kind of work around that. Um, also, you certainly do not want you want to know also with emotional spending, sometimes it's not just with shopping. It could be with giving money to others. And we all know what that is. So someone's in a jam, could be a family member, could be a friend, could be, you know, a, n a number of people that you're close to. And they're like, look, I need to borrow however many dollars and you're the responsible one and they're always hitting you up. So you all because you always give, right? You got to know where your money's going, when it's leaving your pocket, and who it's going to. You cannot just give and give and give till you're broke. I always say give from your overflow. Make sure, one, you're taken care of. Two, your home's taken care of. Three, you have the money to give. You cannot just give, give, give. Emotional spending comes from, okay, so I'm heartbroken by the situation, someone's struggling, so I'm just going to give, you know, them the money and I'll be, and I'll be the one struggling. No, that's not how, that's not how it goes. That's not how I feel you should operate. Help another person out. That's what you should do. Be giving, but don't give to the point where you are lacking. So just know where your money goes, know who it's going to and when it's leaving your pocket. Those are key. Um, and to help someone out when you can, don't always, if you got a particular family member who's always hitting you up for money, maybe you need to give them some good advice.
<laughs> Maybe they need to start following some steps that you're going to follow to help you save. Um, no matter what amount of money you make. I don't care if you're, you know, on the lower end, middle, higher end. You have to be able to know how to manage the money that you currently have before you can add any more to your income. If you're not able to manage that, do your budgeting, do your, you know, your smart spending, making sure you're saving, paying yourself first. They always say that, but it's true. You always have to save for that rainy day. Then no matter what amount of money you have, you'll never be able to manage it. You got to manage what you currently have. You'll have to say no to that thing that you really want for some time. And I'll say, you know, I'll use an example. So um, I wanted another TV for my living room because I had this old TV in my bedroom. I really wanted this TV. And I was like, you know what? It can wait. Do you know how long I waited to get that TV? Two years. I waited two years. I was like, I'm not going to purchase the TV until I have the money to pay for it. And I want to make sure I get a good deal. So I waited two years before I purchased that TV. And I got it. I had the money for it, paid it off. It was fine. But what if I had purchased the TV right at the moment I wanted it? I probably would have put it on a credit card. Probably would have went in debt. Paid interest on it. Doubled paid on the TV. And then been upset with myself because I didn't wait. Because I wanted it so bad. I needed that TV. You know, your desire um, becomes this need. And then this want becomes the pressure that you put on yourself to get it. No. Sometimes it's just got to wait until you take care of everything else that's important. Your home first. Your bills to, to keep you afloat. And your savings. So, again, this is Savvy Mom Elky of Savvy Moms Unite. Hoping to... Give mom some good tips and advice to lead a simple, practical, realistic life. I don't think it should be so complex sometimes. Sometimes it just needs to be that simple. So um, thanks again for coming on my scope. I hope this information was really helpful. And you can follow me on Twitter, Savvy Mom Elky, as well as on Instagram. And also my, fa my Facebook page, which is um, Savvy Moms Unite on Facebook. Please like my page. Follow it. I will um, upload the video. Thanks for the hearts. Much love. God bless.